Hey there LEGO fans, welcome back. Alex here. Very, very excited to share this video with you guys here today because we have before us a very old LEGO pirate ship. Uh, this is the Skulls I Schooner. Uh, set number 6286. It contains 912 pieces, contains 9 minifigures, and came out back in 1993 for $130. So 27 years old now this thing is. I cannot believe it. it makes me feel really old because truth be told, I actually got this as a Christmas present in 1993. Uh, I'm feeling old right now, but that's okay. We're gonna get this thing built. Uh, I'm gonna actually share why I sold it and why I'm actually buying it back again and also reveal to you the price I paid for it. I actually bought it from a seller on Bricklink. I was looking for one that was complete with instructions that no box with this that wasn't too important it would have been nice to have the box but that's okay um, also it was really hard to find one that actually had the sails in good condition that were not yellowed or or tethered um, this one was the best I could find really and uh, there's some slight ever so slight discoloration of the mainsail there I guess we'll put this thing together and see if it really sticks out or not um, but regardless here's the skull's eye schooner here's all the pieces let's go ahead and get this thing built and uh, see what this thing looks like uh, uh, as we restore it to its former glory And there she blows. The Skull's Eye Schooner is complete. And I gotta say, it was a very different building experience than what I'm used to with uh, current day sets because the instruction booklet is very short. Uh, it only has 31 steps. Now, 31 steps for a Lego set that has uh, almost a thousand pieces, every single page is packed with a lot of pieces that you have to apply. I got kind of used to these uh, other Lego sets that have just maybe uh, two pieces that you put on per page. So that was a very different approach uh, to building. So I had to, I found myself going back uh, several pages some, at some times uh, to find where I missed uh, applying certain pieces. The Skull's Eye Schooner came out 12 years before YouTube began. Therefore, I don't feel like it ever got a proper video review. So let me just take a minute to show off some of the cool features of the Skull's Eye Schooner. At the bow of the ship, it does have an anchor that can be pulled out and retracted. It's connected to a 50 centimeter long string. At the front, we also have these two doors that open to reveal a fairly decent sized cargo area. The front mass features a working crane, uh, also a 50 centimeter long string at work here, but this helps load and unload cargo uh, to the schooner. The ship features four cannons, which I just love uh, that it has that many cannons, first of all, and uh, that they can all stick out on the same side of the ship. What's cool about these cannons is that they are attached to the hull of the ship. So therefore, if you move your ship around or pick it up and jostle it around, you're not going to lose uh, your cannons and they won't move around. They also swivel from one side to the other with relative ease, a pretty sleek feature and a fairly advanced feature for these pirates. At the bridge of the ship, there is a small section that can be removed, but it's not big enough to put your hand in there. Um, luckily, there is uh, doors on either side of the ship uh, that open up to reveal the interior. Uh, not a lot going on there, just a, a simple room with a 4x4 blue plate as the table. What is really cool about this ship is that the wheel of the ship actually does move the rudder. Not by very much, but it's a cool feature nonetheless, one that you're not going to see in the more modern pirate ships. 
And at the back, we have the boat uh, that can be deployed uh, to get your pirates to their destination on land. Um, not sure exactly how they would access that boat, but uh, I do appreciate the fact that it is um, out of sight mostly and doesn't really ruin the aesthetics of the ship. And of course, let's not forget the minifigures. You get nine with this ship, uh, a fairly decent number. So when you have them all on the Skull's Eye schooner, no matter where you look, you're gonna see a decent number of pirates. For the condition of the set as a whole, I would say it's in very good condition, uh, especially considering that this thing is 27 years old. When we look at the sails, you can definitely tell that the, the main sail is a bit discolored in comparison to the other sails, which I would describe as like new condition, honestly. They, they look fantastic. Uh, so it's interesting that for whatever reason, the main sail ended up getting discolored while the other ones did not. As far as the condition of the bricks, I did notice when I was building it that there was a small number of gray bricks uh, that were uh, substituted with the modern day light bluish gray bricks. Uh, I also noticed there was a one by two white Tyco brick in this. <laughs> it was kind of funny, but uh, for me, I, it was no big deal. I went down and swapped them out with the pieces um, that I needed that fit uh, the set. Um, not everybody's in that same situation, but I, I would not fault the seller on that at all. Uh, very happy with the purchase. Um, I did notice though uh, that four of the uh, the smaller mast um, beams, I don't know what you'd call them exactly, but two of the four um, had some Lego elements snapped off inside of the top so that you weren't able to stick those um, uh, flagpoles in them. Uh, so I had to be a little creative. Well, not super creative, but I, I swapped them around so that they accommodated those larger pirate flags in the back two masts. Again, uh, not a big deal. I think that's actually going to be fairly common uh, for this particular pirate ship as something could easily fall on top of it and snap those right off. Now, I did get this back in 1993 as a Christmas present. I was 15 years of age at the time. It remained in my collection for 20 years when in 2013, I did sell it on BrickLink. Uh, the reason behind that was because I was liquidating my pirates, my Star Wars, and my castle theme sets um, to specialize in my LEGO City. Uh, that was what I, my goal was when I moved into this home. Um, however, uh, what happens to me, unfortunately, is LEGO comes out with these particular sets that rekindle my desire to collect things. Uh, for example, uh, when the newer uh, UCS Millennium Falcon was released, uh, I had no other UCS Star Wars sets to surround it, so it was missing its friends. So I decided to recollect UCS Star Wars sets, and now you see that my office is now full uh, or getting very full of Ultimate Collector Series Star Wars sets, and that continues to grow. And of course, earlier this year, LEGO had released the Pirates of Barracuda Bay set, and that got me nostalgic about the Black Seas Barracuda pirate ship and all my pirates that um, I used to have. So here I am collecting these pirate ships again. So uh, this is the, the first one to, uh, to come back to my collection. And uh, so there you have it. Oh, and of course, um, I, wanted, I told you guys I would tell you the price here. So in 2013, I sold uh, the, the Skull's Eye Schooner for $260. And it was in decent shape. It didn't have any discoloration, uh, but it did have some broken pieces because at one point a mattress fell on top of it and did break some pieces, unfortunately. Um, then, of course, 13 years later, here we are. I have bought it uh, on BrickLink for $400. Dollars, actually not too. Uh, that's a pretty good price. Uh, I think if you go on uh, Brickset, uh, it is actually for sale. Um, I, well, the price uh, point says it's uh, used value is four hundred and forty dollars. I think, and if you want it um, new, well, the, you pull out your checkbook as it is quite expensive. Um, there is only just, I think just one still available uh, on BrickLink in the Americas anyway, and that is for $666 and change. Um, so it might be hard to find one now. Um, so sorry if I took the cheaper one, which $400 isn't really cheap, but it is what it is. Anyway, I'm really happy with the purchase uh, and uh, uh, looking at it, having it here um, makes me very, very happy. Uh, also, let's go ahead and take a look at the, um, the, the 1993 catalog. Uh, that this thing came out on. These catalogs are a lot of fun because uh, you, when you bought a large enough set, you'd get one of these thrown into your uh, your box. Uh, so here we have Jack the Lego Maniac. Uh, some awesome space. Uh, uh, and again, space is also something I've recollected a little bit. You guys know that. So here is the uh, the line for 
uh, the pirates. Uh, there's the Skull's Eye Schooner. You have the Rock Island Refuge, which I had at one point, and honestly, the prices are so ridiculous on some of these sets. I don't know that I'll get many of them back, honestly. I don't think I had the Wrath Raiders or the Smuggler Shanty. Um, I did have all of the Imperial Guards and the Imperial Trading Post. That's definitely something I'm never going to get back because that thing is just crazy expensive now. It's just kind of, but I love I love these pictures that these uh, these guys would set up. Um, it really just spoke to the teenager inside of me and said, oh, I want to recreate that. And we had some epic uh, pirate battles back in the day. They were a lot of fun. This is, this is when LEGO was really knocking it out of the park with original ideas. Uh, they didn't have so much of this licensed stuff these days. Um, I think LEGO City is really one of the very few lines they have left um, that has any originality left to it. But even that, all we really get are uh, fire stations and police stations and countless helicopters. Uh, so anyway, Model Team was another great one, too, uh, that they had for a while. Some great sets. So anyway, there's a, there's a walk down memory lane. Um, so now, as for the Skull's Eye Schooner, um, I am going to go ahead and put this thing downstairs. However, before I do, I'm going to try a little something. I want to try a little modification with this thing um, and see what you guys think. And we are back from the modifications. I, uh, as, as you can see, um, my main goal here was to create an above deck and below deck of the Skull's Eye Schooner. And uh, so that is why it looks so much beefier in the middle. Uh, so this upper deck right here has been applied. Uh, there were moments when I was downstairs, I'm thinking, what am I doing to my schooner? I'm just uh, tearing this thing apart and making it worse. Because this really is a great ship right out of the box. Doesn't really need much modification, if any at all. But I, I did want to accomplish that. And my aha moment was when I got this railing in. That railing really uh, brought the ship together. It continues that white trim all the way around it, continuing the banister uh, from the main bridge. Um, the, and I didn't really have to uh, make a lot of adjustments to the ship. It kept all the pieces. I didn't take anything away from it. I just added to it. I made sure that the, uh, the cargo uh, doors at the bow of the ship still uh, worked very smoothly. Uh, the cargo area is much deeper now, so if I drop anything in there, it might be hard to retrieve it. Um, but regardless, uh, it looks really good, nice and smooth, that continuation. The only thing that I don't uh, really like, unfortunately, is that uh, the main deck should um, be on the same level as the doors, these white doors that go into the back of the ship. Uh, I, what I should have done, actually, on the whole thing is, is at, uh, increase the height of the bridge by three bricks as well. Uh, but I didn't want to go too crazy with messing that thing up. So for now, the bridge does look like it sits a little bit low. But, you know, it doesn't bug me enough that I'm going to go and change it. And honestly, um, that gap right there is kind of hidden uh, by the sails. And the idea is that people access those doors and uh, the below decks by just using that brown ladder. So anyway, that's the modifications that I've made. Uh, let me know what you guys think, if it looks okay, or if I have uh, committed a massive sin <laughs> by altering uh, the... Uh, the ship but uh, regardless um, this is done so we're going to take this thing downstairs and see what it looks like in its new area and finally here we have it in its uh, place the skull's eye schooner is uh, in this uh, area where i used to have the aquanauts and aqua sharks uh, so josh and i modified this table so it's actually flat on the ground now and uh, that was necessary because these pirate ships are very tall. They need a lot of space height-wise anyway. Uh, yeah, Disney's bounties here for now anyway. We'll see how long it lasts. Uh, the uh, black uh, felt wall behind it is temporary too. Well, it's not temporary. I'll put something else there. The black and blue is kind of weird, but um, it's a work in progress. But anyway, the pirate ship, it looks really good uh, in here. And uh, let me just get closer. I've got the uh, Pirates of Barracuda Bay in its uh, ship form right here next to it for comparison. And uh, as you can see, it looks really good with those modifications that I made to it. I don't feel so bad about making those walls so high because that's exactly how the Barracuda looks with, um, with its height as far as that uh, decking goes. Um, almost identical as far as that goes, I think. But um, fantastic looking ships uh, side by side. I think the Barracuda um, edges out the uh, schooner just a little bit on the height of the uh, top sail there. But uh, regardless, uh, beautiful ships, again, 27 years uh, spreading out these two. This is, of course, the modern one um, that I have here for comparison. Actually, i got to be honest with you guys, it's not for comparison, and let me tell you something. It was a few weeks back, I was making a video, and I made the comment that I was going to uh, put the Pirates of Barracuda Bay back into its pirate ship form uh, because of what I just showed you over there. But so many of you guys told me 
to not do that, to keep it in the amusement park. And you know what? I did. I agreed with you. It looked so much, uh, it looks so good here, right? I just couldn't bring myself to take it out. Um, so uh, because, yeah, because this is still here, yeah, that meant I bought another one. And I blame you guys. It's all your fault <laughs> that I had to um, buy another one. Uh, anyway, it is what it is, right? But uh, so, yeah, I got another one. It actually just came today. And as it turned out, um, Josh was uh, happy to put it together for me as I uh, worked. Uh, so Josh, thanks buddy, you're an absolute legend uh, for putting that together for me. And uh, it was good timing too, because now we have this awesome comparison of these two beautiful ships with a 27 year span uh, between the two of them. So uh, there you have it, folks. Um, some good stuff to come. I have a couple other pirate ships uh, on their way uh, that I will do reviews on and uh, keep adding to this collection down here. I also want to ask you guys, let me know if you guys know of any cool deals of pirate ships or anything uh, uh, pirate related. Um, I would be happy to be interested to check it out. Uh, a lot of stuff is pretty expensive these days. And as you probably have guessed, I'm broke now because I bought these things. But it is what it is, right? Oh, also, before I end this video, I want to say a big happy birthday to uh, one of my subscribers in the UK. Uh, Oliver is turning 10 years old this month, and 10 years old is an awesome birthday because that's actually the birthday, or age, or rather, I should say, um, that I was when I got my first Lego set, and that's what this uh, blue cargo ship is right here. Um, so that's when it all started for me when I was 10. That was a great age. So, uh, Oliver, buddy, I hope you get an awesome birthday. Uh, Lego set, because what else would you get for your birthday, right? <laughs> All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for now. Uh, thank you again so much for watching, and we'll see you guys again in the very near future. Have a good one. Bye-bye.